using a cartridge, just a paper cartridge of gunpowder. You bite the end off. I'm going to fill the pan full of gunpowder. There we go, just enough. Close that. You then bring your musket so that you can see down the muzzle, down the barrel. Shake down the gunpowder. You then put a musket ball down. You then put the broken paper in there, which acts as a wad. Take out your scouring stick, reverse it, shorten it to a handful. You then scour home your charge. Because the soldiers were so nervous of these, it's the beginning of drill movement. Remove thy scouring stick. Reverse it. Replace it. Because if you didn't replace your scouring stick and you fired, you'd shoot that wooden stick at the enemy and wouldn't be able to reload. They then must blow upon their match cord. <sighs> Make sure you've got a burning tip there. Once again, you've got to fit it into those jaws. And right in the heat of battle, you've got to ensure that that will actually touch the gunpowder. We're now ready to fire. And what you simply do is open that pan, present, and give fire. And that's how it's done. This is a flintlock musket, which means that to fire, you've got to put some gunpowder, close the frizzer, lock him, and then you pull the trigger. The sparks and the flame shoot through into the barrel, through a touch hole, ignite your gunpowder charge, which then shoots the musket ball out of the end. Let me show you. You half cock it. Make sure that everything is cleaned out. In your cartridge box, your cartouche, you fetch out a paper charge. In the top of this normally would be your musket ball. You bite the musket ball off, keep it in your mouth. You then sprinkle gunpowder into the pan and lock it. You then pour down the gunpowder. You would then spit down your musket ball, break up your paper cartridge to the wad. You take out your ramrod and you scour down your charge all the way to the bottom, you then ram him, get that out of there as quickly as you can, replace him, you then present your musket, you bring him on, lock him, prepare the fire! Invented in France, just an ounce in weight and half an inch across, one person can cast 3,000 mini balls an hour. Each one of these simple bullets can rip through a man's body in a fraction of a second. In many ways, the Civil War was the first modern war because it was the first war that took place after the Industrial Revolution had begun to transform our country. The new musket is much faster to reload than traditional weapons. Load the gunpowder, ram down the bullet, and it's ready to fire. Imagine warfare where your ability to load a musket faster than the guy with the other musket would determine if you lived or died. on the inside of the barrel, rifling, spin the ball toward its target. The improved accuracy and range are a deadly combination.
On impact, the bullet flattens out. Bone shatters and splinters. causing further damage to muscle and tissue. More often than not, the result of a direct hit, death. Some of the earliest military muskets fired from what was called a cartridge. This is a cartridge. It has the ball and a powder in it. The only thing is it's not self-contained. It took some sort of an external priming mechanism to actually fire the gun, to set the charge off. One of the earliest was used by Prussia, actually, in a, what was called a Dreise needle gun. This looks like a regular paper cartridge, although it has one difference between the cartridge that I just showed you. It actually has a priming mechanism in it. All you had to do was load this into the gun. It was an early bolt-action breech loader. Close the bolt and pull the trigger and fire it. Not a problem. It was slick, easy to use, incredibly reliable. The Prussians used this gun from the early 1840s right up to the Franco Prussian War of 1870. Our next step was called rimfire. And you're familiar with those today. They're still being made in the little 22s. Uh, and what it, what it involved was your priming compound was in the rim of the actual metallic cartridge. You had your powder and your ball. So what came next is the one that probably we're all most familiar with, the center fire. The center fire involved a percussion cap actually in the center of the base, hence center fire. This is a Snyder breech loader. Uh, it it uh, entered British service in 1866. It fires a big 577 round. Uh, again, it's center fire. It's very easy to load. Stick the cartridge in, close the breech block, cock the gun, and 